Well, hello, my name is Brian Blackmore for Dave.Video. And today we're gonna to be talking about the ETC FOSS 4. It's a lighting fixture for video applications. It's a pretty radical departure for the company that's become a staple in the theater, concert, and house of worship market for stage lighting. So it's a flat panel light. Uh, it's an LED light. It has remarkable output, but it's the flexibility and the control of these lights that'll set them apart. We're told it took years of research and development, and ETC considers it to be a new kind of LED light, one that's designed to produce more accurate color renditions and skin tones on camera. So joining us today to discuss the product is Jim Uphoff. He's the entertainment uh, fixture product manager. Jim, say hi. Hello. All right. And also Alex Schwint is a, uh, an independent filmmaker. And Alex uh, recently reviewed the FOSS 4 lights for Church Production Magazine. So say hi, Alex. What's up, everybody? So Jim, tell us more about the ETC FOSS 4 and what makes it unique and different. Yeah, well, you know, you mentioned a lot of the things uh, in the introduction, and I, I appreciate that. You know, this has been a long time in uh, coming for ETC. You know, we've, we've been around since the 70s. Uh, we've been making uh, fixtures, lighting fixtures for entertainment since the early 90s. We've been doing LEDs for over a decade. But the Phosphor line is really a culmination of all that experience that we've put together uh, into a, a product that, that captures not only the creativity of, of uh the lighting that we've been working on for for decades, but also the experience that we have uh, and the new technologies. Some of the technologies that are in these panels uh, were not around even a couple of years ago. So it really is an advanced piece of uh, electronics. Uh, and the goal here was to, to take that experience that we had and to put it into fixtures that were designed specifically for studio lighting and for lighting for camera in general. You know, we have been around in studios for a long time. The Source 4 fixture, which uh, came out in the early 90s, is used pr uh, pretty heavily in, in the studio market because of its versatility and its brightness and its efficiency. Um, but a lot of the products that have been used in the studio market ha have been uh, handoffs from live entertainment applications. And so they weren't designed specifically for use on camera. And as we, as we all know, the workflow for lighting for camera is different than, than some of the other venues as far as how you inter interact with the, uh, the fixtures, how you program them, that sort of thing. So we wanted to start from the ground up, take the knowledge that we had, and make fixtures that were designed specifically for use on camera. Uh, and that's what we have done uh, with this phosphor panel light. Okay, in, in reading uh, about the product and, and what Alex found, I don't want to steer his thunder, but um, it found in the review is there's a particular emphasis on the, um, the use of deep red colors. So can you elaborate on that and tell us a little bit more about why that's important? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, when we started this project, the, the goal here was to come up with the best light output for use on camera. There's a lot of things that went into this physically with the user interface, with the design of the, the light itself uh, for that market. But at the core of it, what we wanted to do was figure out using LED technology, how do you make the best light array for lighting for camera? Um, and as pretty much anybody that does this work will tell you, skin tones are key making skin look natural, being able to adjust uh, the different looks of different types of skin tones and being able to control the light and how that, those skin tones render on camera is where a majority of the work of a lighting designer uh, uh, will spend their time. So we, uh, this actually started with a, a new group at ETC called the Advanced Research Group, or we call them ARG for short, uh, that was started by our uh, founder at ETC, Fred Foster. And the goal of this uh, department was to work within the R&D department, but not to actually develop products. It was to research technologies uh, and then to take that research and pass it off to product uh, development teams, such as the ones I work on, if appropriate, to put into our products. So the first thing that they were tasked with by Fred was to do research on LEDs and camera. Uh, and figure out what that perfect array or, you know, the best that we could get uh, for lighting for camera was. And they spent about two years doing research. They researched different cameras, different chipsets, monitors, scopes, uh, um, meters, different LED wavelengths of different uh, 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 colors. Um, and some of this was empirical. Uh, some of it was objective. 
subjective. You know, we, we brought people in and put them in a tent and, and showed them different images side by side. Which one do you prefer and why? Hundreds of people, uh, laymen's as well as professionals, colorists, things like that. And what they came up with was the arrays that we are now using in the Phosphor line. Um, there are two arrays that, that uh, are, are available. One is called the Luster X8. It is a new uh, Luster mix. We've been using Luster, if you're familiar with the ETC products before. Uh, this was a seven color system. This is now an eight color system and it incorporates that, that, that deep red you mentioned and I'll talk about here briefly. Uh, and then a daylight HDR, which is meant for variable cool white color temperatures. Uh, for extended brightness and control over those white lights if you're not doing anything really with color. Um, and again, also includes that, that deep red. But what we found overwhelmingly is that the people that we, that we polled on this um, almost, almost exclusively selected arrays that included this deep red. If we think about tungsten light and, and how flattering tungsten is as a traditional source on skin tones, um, how flattering it can be, um, a big element of that is that what we call that tungsten tail. So if, you, if you're familiar with what the spectrum of visible light looks like, as you start to get to the deep reds and you start getting near infrared, there's that last little tail of red wavelengths uh, that, that include those deeper reds. And the reds that we've been using in LED technology up until now that you see across the industry with LEDs does not include that deeper red wavelength. Um, and it's, we've sort of gotten accustomed to it as we, have, as we have more LED lights out in the marketplace. But if you compare it to incandescent sources, that last little red is really important for skin tones because, you know, we all have blood, you know, hopefully, still uh, underneath our skin, regardless of your skin tone. And skin is such a unique uh, material because it's not like a, a flat wall where light just reflects off of it. Um, there are multiple layers, uh, and, and the light penetrates into the skin and reflects differently off of the different layers of skin, and it gets down to where there is that red blood in our, in our system. So um, being able to render that properly and having those deep red uh, wavelengths in the light source itself leads to a much more natural, healthy-looking skin tone, and that is really uh, the key to why that deep red is important. All right. That's fascinating. Well, let's bring Alex into the conversation. Alex, um, so, I mean, what were your thoughts when uh, when you were first asked to review a product, a, a lighting for video product from uh, from ETC? Yeah, well, uh, obviously, yeah, I, as someone who is on set in, in, in post making films, 300 days a year, I'm always interested in what is happening in the world of lighting because it is, it's how we paint, it's the colors we paint with. Uh, hearing that it was ETC, I was interested just because I grew up on ETC, Source 4s, Source 4 Juniors, especially in the theatrical world. Um, ETC has a lot of cachet with me personally. So if ETC was doing something new with LED, I was really excited to be able to, to discover that and to explore it. Um, on the flip side, there are a lot of LED panels on the market. And so I was I was probably, especially knowing the, the, the reputations of some of the companies that are already making these, I was a little curious as to whether it could live, the, the panel could live up to the hype as an entirely new kind of LED technology for skin tones and for lighting. So I was curious, I was excited, but probably my guard up was a little bit to say, okay, is this really a step forward? Is this really gonna be different? or is this ETC is jumping into uh, a market that's that that definitely is growing by leaps and bounds every year? So I was curious, but I was I was guarded. So tell us your first impressions as when the product arrived and you were um, dealing with those maybe preconceived expectations versus what you uh, what you found yourself yeah. pulling out of the box. So when I pulled out of the box, the first thing is obviously this thing is is engineered like a tank. Um, I mean, like, it's it's obviously designed to be used for years. Um, it's designed lots of good, you know, professional ways to mount it, professional ways to put it into a studio setting. Um, but I, I really liked the UI, like the control interface. Then when I turned it on and we just cranked it, I was shocked by how much light was coming out of a panel that size. I, I love technology, and we'll get into the color science in a minute, but just one of the things with an LED panel is it, in years past, they've been great. They've been safe to use. They have been energy efficient. 
but they're not necessarily the brightest sources you can get on set. So to have that cranked all the way on and be able to book like it, book light it where we were already, it has a diffusion on the front of it, then push it through one, reflect it on one surface and then double diff reflect it or diffuse it. So it's kind of almost being triple diffused and still have enough light coming out of that panel to be able to like double book light a source was fantastic. And definitely one of those things I look for for when I'm gonna make an investment in LED. So I was thrilled with the brightness. I was thrilled with the, the how well it was put together. Um, but then I was very, very curious about this deep red technology and, and they were using, you know, a lot of LED panels have uh, LEDs that are 3200 or 5600 and they just kind of mix and, and you have those ranges to have something that was this engineered to this level. I was curious about what would happen with those skin tones with those reds. One of the interesting things that I found in, in your review, and, and you can find the review on churchproduction.com, um, is that you mentioned um, that as a uh, coloration, as a color grade, color grading can be done live and on set, or can it be done after, uh, mm -hmm. afterwards in post-production? Um, talk about that balance and how much you try to do on set versus what do you let go knowing that you should have the tools to uh to to fix it in post yeah so kind of like we were talking about earlier um people's eyes have adjusted to a lack of the deep reds over time and it's become an aesthetic choice for some filmmakers now but we shot we actually to test the light we actually shot in 6k black magic raw and then we also shot in canon raw just so we would have two different ways to look at this and to make sure we weren't getting a biases of a specific camera codec or gamma curve to make sure we were really getting a representation of what was coming out of the light. And the, the, those deep reds and that, that total mix of light coming off the cameras was obviously the, the best LED light I'd ever used. Uh, camera to camera codec to codec. Um, could we go into DaVinci and replicate uh, what we, because we, we set up two different kinds of LED. We set up the ETC, we set up another LED fixture, just ran in both a 5600 just to see if we could replicate it. We could replicate to some degree the effect if we were trying to match the two shots between one kind of LED source and the ETC. But it's one of those things that that's not really the world we live in. It's, it's easier to, to match those tones when you have a, a reference source. When you didn't have it, it's hard to put it back in and post. So it's always better to capture as close to what you want and as close to good on set as possible. And now that's, again, high-end cinematic filmmaking where color grading is a big part of the process. If you're doing event work, if you're doing TV studio work, if you're doing install work, um, if you're doing talking head curriculum video creation, that kind of thing, you don't have the time to jump into DaVinci and really try to dial in and re-get some of those deep red effects back in you need something that you can put a look on and you can get from point A to point B in delivery, sometimes within the course of a single day, and you just don't have time for that effect. So for me, the thing that was really impressive about the FOSS 4s was not just the cinematic, but it was the high-end studio, the TV, the curriculum style stuff. Those are the kind of things where you don't have time to try to replicate an effect, that the light's just right, and it's just correct, and it just is beautiful, and it does bring out across a number of different kinds of skin tones uh, that look, for me, it's like the pale Caucasian was the one that I actually felt like benefited the most because they're the ones that need that representation more than the other kinds of skin tones we tested it with. So I was I was really impressed with the Voss 4. I just thought this is genuinely a step forward in the entirety of the technology. Right, okay, fascinating, Alex. Yeah. Um, so let's bring uh, Jim back into the conversation. J Jim. Um, so we talked a little bit about the, you know, cinematic applications, uh, filmmaking, things like that. Alex Tuck touched just slightly upon, uh, lighting live events. And I think mm -hmm. in this era of, um, the pandemic and, and just the sort of the video marketing revolution that we're, you know, has been the last maybe eight or 10 years, um, people, um, capturing live events, uh, corporate presentations, church services, concerts, theater. Uh, there's just more content available on the internet. Um, do you see this fixture being used in live events as well as, uh, you know, studio and, and television 
type work? Uh, I do. Yeah. You know, it, it, the, the goal of this product line, as I said, was to make the, this, this beautiful man, light that could be manipulated by the designer in any way they wanted possible. If we give the tools, if we give the ingredients, we let the chef do the cooking, right? Uh, the, on top of that, it was also to make a product that was versatile in its ability to go into any environment. Um, Alex mentioned the brightness, right? There are a lot of scenarios where you don't need that brightness. Cameras are getting better and better. You only need 12, 15 foot candles sometimes in certain scenarios. You don't need the amount of light that sure. this fix, these fixtures are capable of putting out. But there are environments where you do, right? And instead of making 12 different fixtures where you pick the one that has the output, we wanted to make a fixture that was all encompassing of uh, and had the ability to do any environment. So I do think that it is a versatile uh, product that can go into any of these venues. Uh, we wanted to make the user interface really accessible to people and really quick to learn for that reason, because you may install this in a, in a news studio uh, and run it with a DMX console, but you may have it on a soundstage or out on location someplace where you don't have a DMX console. You need to be able to get to that and make those adjustments accurately and quickly from the fixture itself. So that allows it to go into those different environments as well. So with the accessories that are available to it, uh, whether it's Shamira's and things like that, with the user interface, the software, the brightness, and the color control, it really is suited to go into any environment to excel in those environments and to be able to provide whatever is needed by the designer in that moment. If you have just a quick moment, I would love to share with you uh, a, a new product that we're working on. You know, it, when I talked about FOSS4, it is a family of products. It is not just the panel light. Uh, and so we are working on other fixtures to go along with it. And I actually happen to have sitting with me right here, uh, this version uh, of, of one of our initial production uh, uh, phosphor Fresnels. This is a seven inch Fresnel. Uh, it is uh, going to be added to the product line here, but before the end of the year, uh, it has the same two arrays as the panel light. So it has the, both the, the luster and the daylight arrays in it. So it's a really great companion fixture, shares software, has all the same features with wireless and NFC that you see in the panel. Um, and we're going to be really excited to get this out into the marketplace, uh, like I said, before the end of 2020. Yeah. Wow. We got a scoop. Um, Alex, do you have any uh, initial thoughts on this uh, this new addition? Yeah, that's going to be... You know, it's one of the things we were talking about, how the light, the phosphors work great in, in studio spaces and in film. Having something that's stage applicable and if it has the power and the juice that looks like it's going to have, that could that could be a pretty big deal. Well, the product is the ETC Phosphor. It's a lighting for video fixture. It's a panel light. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Jim Upoff from um, from ETC and Alex Schwint, uh, independent filmmaker based in Raleigh, North Carolina. So uh, thank you guys for uh, for being with us today. I hope we can do it again sometime. Uh, yeah. So until next time, uh, my name is Brian Blackmore for Dave.video. Thank you for joining us.